When Hollywood needs a safe bet at a new show or movie, live action remakes of popular cartoons or video games seems to be their go-to move. And my problem with them isn't what you think it is. I don't give a shit if they change the race of a magical sea fish, or the graphics look weird, although that is sometimes the case. No, my main issue is that they don't tell a new or unique story. Essentially, they slap a coat of paint onto an established IP, and that frustrates me from a storytelling perspective and a creativity perspective. But before I go any further on this rant, I want to stop and add a disclaimer to the people who like live action remakes. There are definitely people out there who love this style, and that's perfectly okay. Everyone has different tastes. Hell, I love the movie The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Even though that movie was so bad, it literally made Sean Connery quit acting. So if you're passionate about live action adaptations, this probably is not the video for you. Back to the point, this video idea all started for me because I'm currently watching the new Avatar show on Netflix. Now, the show isn't as bad as the live action M. Night Shyamalan movie, that's for sure. But then again, I don't think anything can be that bad. My issue is much bigger and more strategic, I'd say. It doesn't tell a new or different story. It takes the plot from the cartoon and just makes minor tweaks here and there so the first season can be tightened to less episodes. The major plot threads and designs are all the same. I find myself zoning in and out paying attention because I already know generally what's going to happen next. There's very little anticipation of where the plot or story is going to go. Another example of this for me was The Last of Us show from last year. The Last of Us show I did enjoy, and there were definitely a variety of standout moments and episodes in it but the show deviated very little from the actual video game plot it was based on, which made me feel like I was just waiting for the scenes from the video game that I enjoyed to pop up. Rather than focusing on the journey, I was waiting for key chapters, and that's because I have already seen that story told, and so have a lot of other people. I will give The Last of Us some credit though, Episode 3, Long Long Time, did a great job of fleshing out an easter egg storyline from the video game into a fully fleshed out story. I wish the show did more of that. Making shows like The Last of Us or The New Avatar feel repetitive to me. If you aren't going to alter the story or direction, what exactly is the point? The video game or cartoon already told this story, and there's no way to tell it in a way that's better. Adding in real human actors does not drastically change anything from a story perspective. In many cases, it actually makes the story worse. That leads me to the conundrum of how live-action adaptation stories are told. There are three main ways to make a live-action adaptation. Option one are the examples I already stated where you take the plot of the existing story and you add human actors while only making minor tweaks to the story. This style is the safe option, because fans already like and know that story, so there won't be many complaints from a story perspective. The negative is that this brings very little new to the table, making it feel like a cheap, hollow representation of the original cartoon or video game source material. The second option is you take the existing story and you create a new story branching off the already existing main story. In this option, the story is told in the same universe as the source material, instead with human actors now representing the previously cartoon or animated characters. The 1990s Hook movie tried this. In the Hook movie, they explored what happened to Peter Pan since leaving Neverland. The problem with the second option is it's difficult to create a prequel or sequel branching off an established, beloved story. It will get compared to the original and almost always never match its charm. As well, just because a story explores a new area, doesn't necessarily mean that area is interesting. Much like how the prequel Harry Potter movies have not come close to capturing audiences like the original. The third option is to simply take the theme or the setting of the universe you are adapting and throw out everything else to tell a completely new story. Maybe you keep character names and aesthetics, but the core of those characters are changed to fit a completely new narrative. This way just pisses off a lot of people though, since it comes across as exploitative. The beloved story is essentially being stripped for parts, and is only being used because Hollywood wants that avid audience to engage with its new story, but is scared that if that new story is asked to stand on its own merit, it'll die. So the story is attached to an existing IP to help boost its audience appeal. The best example of this approach is the live-action Mulan movie. In that version, they got rid of the original's musical numbers, cute animal sidekicks, the Huns, and the romance plot, with only some similarities to the cartoon. And that led to pissing off a lot of fans of the original. Also, filming near a re-education camp didn't exactly help PR. Honestly, in my opinion, going in the direction of the second option is the better way to do live-action adaptations. Instead of just redoing the exact plot of an existing IP, it would be better to instead take those same characters and tell a new story of theirs. 
Uncharted kind of did this, creating a story of a young Nathan Drake that is supposed to exist in the same reality as the video games. Although, they did retcon the original Nathan Drake in Sully meeting. As well, the movie has a ton of other issues, like the Sully casting alone is something. But I at least respect that, instead of just directly remaking the first video game, they at least told a new story. At least in that situation, I was curious of what was going to happen next, rather than knowing exactly how it would end. And it wasn't like the third option that just completely pulverizes the source material. But to be completely honest though, all three options are not great and they have significant pitfalls. The only style of live action adaptation that has found a way to semi work consistently is the superhero genre. Superhero stories have lent themselves best to taking the cartoon slash comic book characters and turning them into live action heroes. Look at the Dark Knight trilogy. That is essentially a live action adaptation of a cartoon hero. However, instead of just remaking a comic book plot, Christopher Nolan created his own standalone Batman story. The peak Marvel movies are similar to that. Sure, they take some inspiration from the comic book storylines, but for the most part, they are adapted and changed to tell a new story. Cartoons like Avatar or the Disney princesses or popular video games don't have that same level of success in the live format. That's why I believe firmly Hollywood needs to chill the fuck out with live adaptations. Not every cartoon needs to be quote, brought to life. I mean shit, they don't do this with iconic live action movies, like taking Star Wars A New Hope and creating a shot for shot remake, but in cartoon fashion. By doing these live adaptations so much, you are diluting the established story. And it will never be even as close to as good as the original. Just because a character is played by a human actor, doesn't make it good. Hollywood needs to respect that some voice actors have tremendous talent and have the ability to encapsulate a role in a way that no human actor can. Like for me personally, the greatest Batman will always be Kevin Conroy. But Hollywood would never recognize him with the likes of great actors like Christian Bale, even though he should absolutely be in every conversation about great actors who played the caped crusader. Bottom line, Hollywood needs to stop mining iconic cartoon and video game characters just because they are afraid of new ideas. That takes me to, why does Hollywood even do this? Especially since reception is rarely overwhelming praise. Why would they continue to make live action adaptations if they don't become beloved? Am I so out of touch? No, it's the children who are wrong. Well, that comes to marketing and business priorities. The biggest hurdle for new TV shows and movies nowadays is how to stand out among all the other content options for viewers. Marketing minds have to solve that problem and find ways to present their content in a way that gets people to give up their valuable time to go to theaters or log into a streaming service to watch, or even pay for a streaming service. That marketing job is made significantly easier if the content already has a baked in established avid audience, like cartoons and video games do. You get to start from second base in that scenario, since you know the avid fans of that IP will definitely watch. So all you need to do is bring in some new fans and it's a success. From a business perspective, this also makes sense. Movies and TV shows cost money and you don't want to invest in content that might not resonate with fans. However, live action adaptations already have those built in audiences. So from a business mentality, that makes it a lot more of a sure thing that people will watch and you will get your return on investment. While producing a new, totally unique movie or show entails risk. Risk that no one will like it, or even worse, that no one will notice until it's too late. Production companies don't want cult classics, because those don't make the immediate return on investment that production companies need. That's why gravitating towards safer bets is a natural reaction by studios and production companies. Even though live action adaptations rarely hit home runs, they do hit singles. And singles are much better than striking out, which is why live adaptations of popular animated stories are not only here to stay, they are likely to continue to expand. I'm tired of this, Grandpa! That's too damn bad! That saddens me a little bit as a content fan, because it ultimately works backwards from a conclusion. Production execs are essentially asking what major franchises can we adapt or tell stories of, rather than what franchises still have unique stories to tell. And the brutal truth is that some franchises just don't need to be adapted, since their full story has already been told, and told well in animated fashion. All you can do by retelling or reimagining it is water down the original beloved story. Anyway, this rant has gone on long enough, and I promise to go back to my lane of history videos. And thank you for bearing with me during this rant.